This morning, we are excited to introduce a topic which is relevant to the season. Since uh, the entire December is uh, Christmas and New Year season, we have with us this morning Dr. Dennis Botte, a medical practitioner from the HealthNet Medical Center, to take us through the effects of alcohol on the body. So uh, Joyce and I will be, en will be engaging Dr. Botte on the subject. Doctor, good morning and welcome to New Day. Good morning and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good morning, Joyce. Good morning, Doc. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So, so, so Doc, uh, about alcohol, you know, some people say I drink, but I don't drink much in moderation and just, just a bottle a day. Uh, some are heavy drinkers, some don't drink at all. Some even say when you consume kinky or banku, because they are fermented food, you've consumed alcohol. Mm. But really, uh, when we talk about alcohol, what do you mean by alcohol? Don't forget and that even with, uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, with COVID, there are some people who believe that you should consume huge, <laughs> you know, quantities of alcohol if you want to protect yourself from it. Mm -hmm. So um, alcohol consumption, what is it? That's very true. What I mean, yesterday I, I had to go and speak somewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, I know a lot of people have held the microphone, mm -hmm. so <laughs> as soon as I finished talking, I was like, I was looking for a place to wash my hands, because I, then it was a, you know, a festive occasion. One man called me, said, oh, come, come, come. Then the bottle of alcohol, yeah. just poured it in my hands, <laughs> and I used it to wash my hands, here. Yeah. And I said, like, this time around, alcohol has become very useful when it comes to COVID. But now we use it in washing our hands, not in drinking, to, exactly. um, to uh, prevent yeah. COVID for that matter. Yeah. We use it to wash our hands or clean our hands and uh, sanitize. Alcohol drinking is something that um, I think since Adam uh, has always been there. I mean, uh, it makes people happy when it comes to such occasions. And I don't think humanity has been able to stop people from drinking, no matter how much we have spoken. But it also doesn't change the fact that alcohol can be harmful to a person's health. If you look at the Bible, I think from Noah, God drank his children, you know, all the, and all throughout it happens. And especially in times like this when um, it's a happy season, and you just listen to the party, bay, people will be going for parties, and they actually tell you, ye unfi. <laughs> they use that term. <laughs> so people intentionally know that this time around, <laughs> we'll dirty ourselves. <laughs> we'll dirty ourselves. And and if you go to any of such these occasions, you realize that yeah. people will be sitting quietly for a long time. As long as the drinks start going in, then the dancing begins soon after that. So it means that just by taking alcohol, certain immediate effects begin to take place. And um, one, it's going to um, take away your inhibitions, things that you couldn't do or you are shy to do. Immediately, you realize that you are more relaxed, you are free to get up and do th or things you can't say, uh, even to your mother-in-law. With alcohol, you are likely to, <laughs> <laughs> to say it and walk away, only for you to have the effects later. So it has immediate effects on, on, on the psyche of a person or on the human body. Um, and then it also has very long-term effects that... Uh, are not too good for 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 human beings' health. So, um, in the first place, I would say that consumption of alcohol, as part of as much as it makes you relaxed, um, maybe just in small quantities, makes you relaxed, and it also um, takes away inhibitions and makes you free to flow. Another thing it does is that it also affects your sense of judgment. It will affect your sense of judgment even when you are driving. That is when you think that you are the best driver in the world. You can, you can navigate every path. And that is something what leads to accidents on the road. Because it gives you that sense of being overconfident mm -hmm. in yourself. Mm -hmm. And then if you are driving, you are likely to do things you are not supposed to overspeed and think that, oh, it's very normal. You can, you can harm yourself. Again, um, there is something we call beer goggles. Let me call it alcohol goggles this time. You know goggles. I mean, mm -hmm. this one is my <laughs> spectacles, but you have goggles. Um, that is to say that it gives you a spectacle to wear. These spectacles or these goggles is poor judgment goggles. So it is the story of somebody who goes out for like this party gay thing, goes out to have fun, and then whilst high on alcohol, takes a girl home. And then wakes up in the morning and tends to look at the kind of girl he brought to you. He says, hey! 
But no, Jesus. <laughs> If he wasn't high on alcohol, probably wouldn't he have chosen that girl. But with the alcohol there, yeah. that he the thought he had seen. <laughs> with alcohol, you know, he thought he had seen the most could beautiful. Could you give a better example? <laughs> <laughs> Please find the next example. <laughs> so you end up picking somebody or something that you realize. Ah, so me and and again, you do things when you are high on alcohol, and after that, when the alcohol is off your eyes or when eyes clear, as we say it, you can say, ah. So was that me? Or if, if they showed you a video of what you did, you have to say, I, I mean, that couldn't have been me. You might even deny it was you. So it affects sense of judgment. It gives you giddiness. And then maybe uh, your balance is affected. Your central nervous system can be affected. In terms of long-term effects, um, there are many. Uh, alcohol actually affects almost every system in your body. From your central nervous system, digestive system, your immune system. Um, in terms of... Uh, risk of developing other disease conditions alcohol is is a is a notorious agent for for these things if you read about any of the cancers there's no cancer that you read about whose risk factors doesn't have alcohol as one of them mm -hmm. um endocrine even fertility issues i mean why do we even tell women that when you are pregnant do not take alcohol not even um a glass of alcohol because the, uh, any little amount of alcohol in the woman who is pregnant can affect the baby. There's something called fetal alcohol syndrome, mm -hmm. which can affect the uh, intelligence of your child. So every little amount of alcohol that you put in your body certainly has del deleterious effect on the body. I'll go into the long-term effects yeah. later. Dr. Bote, there are a lot of people who say, oh, alcohol is good for the heart. I don't drink much. I am not alcoholic. I just take something small to eat. For those people, for, appetite. <laughs> <laughs> for those people, would alcohol have any negative uh, consequences or effects on okay. their bodies? So, um, let me speak like a doctor and not like uh, in terms of uh, religious belief systems. Um, a little amount of alcohol, as we said, as we said earlier, even when you eat kinky or some of these fermented or fermentable um, uh, foods. Uh, eventually, you feel drowsy sometimes, you feel mm -hmm. like as though you are taking alcohol. So we think that these things them, in themselves even gives us a little amount of alcohol in the system. So you don't necessarily need to add any extra uh, extraneous uh, alcohol to your system. But um, a little amount of alcohol, like, like the, the thing says that a little bit of red wine especially is good for the heart. Well, um, but too much of the same can actually give heart problems so it's not oh. like um, the wine or it's not good at all but it's about the quantity and frequency of usage that can have um, uh, a negative effect on your cardiovascular system alcohol indeed is one of the risk factors for people developing strokes alcohol is one of the risk factors for people developing diabetes or contributing to them having diabetes alcohol is one of the factors that contributes to people um, developing uh, or falling more prey to or succumbing more to cervical cancer if you have the risk already, um, prostate cancer, breast cancer, I mentioned any of them, colon cancer, esophagitis, or oh, sorry, uh, cancer of the esophagus. All these cancers have um, uh, alcohol as a risk factor. So when you are thinking of, oh, a little alcohol is good for the heart, also think about the fact that. I mean, can I do without it and still have a healthy heart? So you can still do without alcohol and still have a healthy heart. Mm -hmm. So that is it's not like the, the ish thing that without that, my heart will not be healthy. I need it automatically, definitely, for my heart to be healthy. That is, that, is, that is not true. So those who say that, I say that it is not true. It's not right. The, 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 the danger there is the fact that um, alcohol has the potency of causing something called tolerance and then you get to dependence so mm -hmm. it becomes something you do every day a little every day a little and when you take it today you have a certain effect the immediate nice feeling you know that relaxation that that um inhibitions that go away it makes you feel good for some time and then tomorrow or a week later you take the same amount and now you don't feel the same effect you had last week so now this time I have to push it up a little for me to have the you same need effect. To get top up. So you start with one bottle. Oh, maybe ask for me the one bottle, one bottle. 
Then you realize that after a month, the one bottle is not giving you the same effect. Now you have to, to go to two bottles in order to feel the same effect. That means that your body is becoming tolerant of alcohol, alcohol, and then you have to increase it. Before long, you have to do six bottles before you get the same effect. And then it means that these quantities will now begin to affect your liver. It affects your pancreas. There's something in the body called the pancreas, which um, uh, is, is an organ that functions mainly in, con in producing certain enzymes and also helps in our production of insulin in controlling our sugar. So a lot of alcohol abuse or insulting the pancreas with alcohol can affect your insulin production and can contribute to or worsen um, your, your sugar levels if you are diabetic or if you are not diabetic, it can contribute to you um, developing diabetes later on. The liver is the organ that takes the, all the bunch, all the punches when it comes to alcohol. The liver is the, is the, is the organ that actually controls a lot of our uh, chemical mechanism, the metabolism, and the, all, is, is, uh, all these things are usually taking place in the liver. Now, alcohol affects the efficiency of function of your liver. Mm -hmm. So anytime you are drinking alcohol, you know that I just saw something on the screen and that's caught me laughing. People just fall in gutters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at this point, these people are out of control. There's <laughs> nothing. He's sitting there and just will still fall off a chair. <laughs> it's so high on alcohol. The liver gets damaged and your body metabolism, everything goes haywire. When you drink a lot of alcohol, you end up getting so dehydrated. A lot of people wake up in the mornings and they have headaches. Alcohol, immediately, I mean, just uh, 24 hours, you can have headaches. And this is somebody asking me, why is it that when you drink alcohol, sometimes you have headaches? And I said, it's because of dehydration. Oh, alcohol will cause you yeah. to um, urinate a lot. So you get dehydrated. And if you are not careful to be drinking water alongside, dehydration will end up giving you headaches. So sometimes you realize that when people have, um, how do you call it, is it hangovers? They tell him drink water, drink water, drink water. It's because of the effect of alcohol. Coming back to the liver, it destroys the liver. So one of the eventual things that it can have is giving somebody what's called chronic or an alcoholic liver disease. It destroys the liver, eventually can lead to something called cirrhosis of the liver. And when the liver gets destroyed, you are better off gone. Because your body cannot metabolize so many things, you end up having other signs your abdomen will swell up so big um water will be sitting in your tummy um, you are likely to lose weight you are going to get jaundiced your hair your hair gets lighter i mean it gives them that kind of picture we call it alcoholic fascist the face we see the picture and we know that uh, nobody has to tell you <laughs> well, bro, there, so, bro, yeah. <laughs> so it happens that the, the alcohol has, is going to have these effects on the liver, destroy the liver. Oh, my God. My dog, by way of um, education, I think that when we arrived here this morning, uh, Samir was actually speaking to road crashes. What do you think is the correlation between alcohol ingestion and, of course, with uh, road crashes? I mean, yeah, we've had a lot of them over the years, but I think normally around this period, the yes. numbers yes, are very high. It is quite a good amount of, or the number of accidents we have uh, as a result of alcohol use. Um, so drivers who, uh, this by uh, short road drivers, bus drivers, uh, around this time of the year, they, their Christmas and everything is still on the road. Mm. They still have to drive people, so they feel that I need to take in a little alcohol in order for me to also enjoy my Christmas. But that puts the life of himself and every other person in the vehicle um, at, at risk. As I said earlier on, alcohol affects your judgment. Um, so, and the pressure of so many people wanting to travel and I have to go and come, go and come and quick, go, come quickly in order to ferry people to wherever they want to go, is what call, uh, alcohol adding to it ends up over speeding. Again, with the wrong judgment, there's a porthole, you can't see the porthole in order to dodge it. And then you, or maybe he might over, over dodge it and then throw the people off somewhere. It's all because of the effect of alcohol on, on the brain and on the mental functionality of the person at the time. And in these times, in the, I mean, there are, there are places where I hear that they have to check on the drivers, uh, the station master has to check on the drivers. 
But this time around, we have a call in such as we can just go and buy it it's in your pocket somewhere. And oh, uh, Mikko Jonsab, I'm going to urinate, and then it just goes in and pours it into the system. So alcohol contributes a great deal to the mayhem that we have on our roads, you know, to the, um, the, the number of accidents that we are recording on our roads. So it, it's something that we should all be aware of and try and put in mechanisms to uh, reduce the consumption of alcohol well, by only because public Well, is actually here. She is from the Information Ministry. Mm. Are we failing in our advocacy, in our education? What is it? Why are people not getting the message? I mean, you've put it very bluntly that alcohol affects your judgment, it affects your ability to drive. It would actually f cause you to do things that you probably haven't even thought about. So what is it that we are failing to do as a people? Well, I think that there should be checks and balances uh, when it comes to especially a public drivers of public transport. Um, you know, the thing where we use uh, a certain meter to, you know, check how much yeah. alcohol the person has consumed. Uh, a number of times we, we, we do that on the road, but maybe if we can, I, I think the, the as a driver, they know, they know that the alcohol is not good, but it gives you again that false sense of confidence that mm -hmm. I can do anything. Um, but if we can some, do some of these checks at the stations before they leave, and if there's a way of checking to make sure that the, the driver doesn't stop anywhere on the road to go and enter mm -hmm. some blue kiosk, and then <laughs> he can stop on it to respond to nature's call. And as you said, all it's, those total park little ones can go exactly. easily into someone's So it is, it's still a way of still yeah. appealing to them, um, hammering on it all the time that yeah. it is not good. It yeah. is not good. I mean, don't think of just yourself yeah. being happy for yeah. that moment, but think of the many lives that can be lost through your um, yeah. wanton use of alcohol. Yeah. And Joyce, you know um, the advertisement of alcoholic products yeah. in Ghana has actually evolved. Uh, mm. At some point, you could just put anything out there any time of the yeah. day. But now, through the efforts of the Food and Drugs Authority, they have to vet your adverts. They have to even caution you to drink responsibly yeah. and all that. Yeah. So it is also incumbent upon the person yeah. consuming yeah. that after all the information has been passed on to you, knowing that consuming alcohol is likely to affect your judgments. Yeah. You, you need to think twice uh, before you consume any amount of alcohol. But I think that is just where the problem really lies, that yeah. we get all these notices, all the warning signs are there, and yet still, because presently, look, bad as this pandemic has been, in Ghana in particular, a lot more people are still dying as a result of these uh, yeah. road crashes more than yeah. any other thing. Yeah, and I think, uh, again, you, you, you've hit the nail right on the head. The advertisement of alcohol, it's... I think if, before I travel around, and for countries I've tried, I don't see any, haven't seen any country that advertises alcohol more than my country. Thank you. You look on the TV station, hardly do you see you any can advert say it, on alcohol. Fatty doesn't want to say that. Please say it, say it again. I, I travel to African <laughs> countries, different countries, like European countries, and you hardly see alcohol adverts. But you come back here, oh, yes. and you can see a chain of adverts, and it's all about alcohol. When I was a child, I used to see adverts on um, cigarettes. But at a point, I think we just yeah. stumped on it yeah. that no more advert advertisement of uh, cigarettes and uh, yeah. and then now you have to put things labels yeah. on the thing uh, that it kills uh, um, smoking can kill or can cause cancer. But come here, and uh, the adverts are all there. Yeah. And so you see, anything we put out on television too or an advertisement, yeah. people assume that once. It is being advertised, then and it's good. That they are, those adverts are actually usually very exciting. And very exciting. Yes, people yes. are very enthusiastic. And, and so, I mean, yeah. I think as a nation, we should come to that point. If we are seeing the... Um, and again, when I was a child, I used to see a lot of people smoking by the roadside, yes, you know. Our mm -hmm. fathers, our uncles, you know. Yeah. But for some time, if you, people come to Ghana and say, that's what Ghana people, you don't smoke. Yeah. I said, now people hide and smoke. Nobody's putting pressure on anybody. How do you see anybody holding a mm -hmm. stick or cigarette on the road? It's not it's a, as cool as it used to be. Good. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Once we go down low on um, advertising alcoholic products, I think with time, it will also, um, the, 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 how do you call that? The whatever about it will also go down, just like um, that of cigarettes has also gone down. Maybe we shouldn't promote it's a conversation we need to have. Yes, we shouldn't promote yes, it. I think the promotion is part of the problem. And of yeah. course, it's availability too. You know, in some jurisdictions, if you don't even have a, an ID card telling yeah. them that you are of age, yeah. you probably can't buy alcohol. 
and most of these adverts will have the limit of 18, etc., mm -hmm. or even 21. But yes, I noticed that here, most of these adverts, to be honest with you, they don't have an age limit. Or any, but yes, I know that the FDA in particular is doing a very, very good job, and over the years they've improved, especially in terms of the permits and the licensing, etc., even in terms of the education. But then I think that it is also a huge industry. Yes. It drives it, the See, that's, that's where the thing is. Ah. A huge industry. Yes. I mean, around this time of the money, year, absolutely. around this time of the year, yes. there's shortage of exactly everywhere. But and most <laughs> of the trucks you see are either bringing it or taking it out. <laughs> so when you start this company, I'm sure even as you're speaking, someone is going to send you a text message, you yeah. know, because it's, it's a, a huge it. industry. And you want uh, to support the business. Yes, yeah. that, that is part of it. But I think that the education is key. It's something that we must keep. Yes, and, uh, I, and I, uh, yeah, I like always get worried, yes, and yes. I tell myself that probably in the next thirty years, yeah. the amount of or as as in the, on, uh, the health of this country, we'll be looking at having a lot of liver diseases. Yeah. If if the trend goes this way, because now a lot more people are drinking alcohol, you drive past. Formerly, it was. Even if a lady would, a woman would drink alcohol, they hide. But now they sit with the men. Fact, and even <laughs> sometimes they consume more than the men. <laughs> so, I mean, the effects are not immediate, yeah. you know. But the long-term effect, give yeah. yourself 30, 50 years' time. We will start recording, oh, a lot more people are getting liver diseases. Yes. You won't understand. It's because of what happened 30 yeah, sure. years ago. I mean, when we were younger, probably at school, I'm sure, Fatih, you remember, if someone, even a lady sat with you and probably drank a bottle of beer, you'd find it very strange. Yeah, very yeah, strange. Or yeah. ask for vodka, for example, you'd yeah. probably feel very awkward. But you know, lately, it's just like the order of the day. And, uh, <laughs> they are matching the main yes, boot for yes, we've become very <laughs> passive about it. Dr. Dennis Botti would like to say thank you for joining us this morning and for the insights. So you heard him from the professional. But you don't He's a medical so I, I haven't taken alcohol before. But for those who do, yes, yes, you heard him. Uh, kindly <laughs> advise yourself and then... <laughs> or join Fatty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you can. Kindly advise yourself. We'll go for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.